people are thinking about black holes, they don't know if they're real, they don't know if gravitational waves are real, Einstein is still alive, they're not sure if they exist. And along comes a young physicist, Ray Weiss. He was a young professor at MIT. He started to think of a way to build this musical instrument to record the sounds of the ringing of space. And he started to build an instrument that was about a meter and a half long. And his colleagues came by and they tell him, you're never going to get tenure. And what you're doing is not important, it's ridiculous. And he thought to himself, you know, they're right. So he does this study of how big the instrument would have to be to be successful. And he realized it would have to be about four kilometers long at least. This is the instrument, it's called LIGO. The details of how it works doesn't matter, but it is very much like an electric guitar. Only it costs a billion dollars. A thousand people worked on it for 50 years to make two. There's one on the coast in Louisiana. The other is in Washington state. And the idea is that let's say black holes collide somewhere in the universe. These waves would travel through the universe and they would wash over the earth and be recorded. In the year 2000, they build these instruments and they hear nothing for 15 years. Ray Weiss says to me in 2015, if we do not detect black holes, this thing is a failure. And I thought that was a deeply honest thing to say. It's a deeply honest thing to say for an 80 something year old man who's been working on this for 40 years, right? 45 years to say the truth. They were about to start the first science run of the advanced detector. Okay, everything is on the line. A billion dollars, a scientific community is not in their corner. There were fights publicly in Congress about how this experiment was not worth the money and how it would serve nobody and how it would fail. And, uh, and they get nervous and they start to think we're not ready, we're not ready to run the detector. It's the middle of Sunday night and the experimentalists are messing with the instrument trying to test it and they get tired and frustrated and they decide to go home, mercifully leaving the instrument locked in observing mode. And in the span of an hour, there's an event and it washes over both instruments and here's what happened. 1.3 billion years ago, two black holes collided. Each one was about 30 times the mass of the sun. For all we know, they were orbiting each other for a billion years. But the only time they rang space-time loud enough to create a signal that would cross 1.3 billion years as a whisper, I mean the tiniest sound you can possibly conceive of, was in the final handful of orbits before they merged. The sound that was recorded was one-fifth of a second. Too fast for a human to hear. I'm going to play it for you, slow down, so that we could hear it. That's it. But you hear the chirp. More power came out in those gravitational waves than all the power in the light of all the stars in the observable universe combined. And it came out in complete darkness. No picture, no photograph will ever be taken of that event. Then, and miraculously, they had an event on December 26. It was a, one big black hole and a slightly smaller black hole, and they collided, and this is what that sounded like. You can hear the difference. Scientifically, you can recreate the sound of a banging drum and deduce from it what actually happened. And then later, something extraordinary happened, which was the collision of two neutron stars. This is what it sounded like. Boom. Because they're not black holes, they're actual physical objects that are almost black holes, but they have a surface, they have dense, dense matter. When they collide, it creates fireworks. 
This event was the most widely studied event probably in the history of all of astronomy. 